Okay, first let me show you the uh, kit I'm going to add uh, to the Traveler guitar. I'm gonna put in a set of these Grover 406C locking tuners uh, because one of the things about the ProMod X is it's terribly hard to string without locking tuners. I shouldn't have ordered it without the locking tuners that are available stock. So I'm gonna put in these and that's gonna require me to put in a, a screw because the, um, uh, the tuners that are on it are pin type. Uh, but I, I wanted to have these Grovers, so I'm going to have to put in a screw. Then uh, the big mod is I'm going to put in this Seymour Duncan Billy Gibbons Red Devil. Uh, I love this pickup. It's um, got a great PAF sound. I think it's uh, really going to do something nice for the Pro Mod X. And I'm going to hook that up with a, uh, a three-way switch. A, this is a DP-DT on-on-on switch. I'll be able to get parallel serial and uh, the split coil so for the single coil sound. So all of that will be available once I've done the mods on the guitar. So let's uh, get the Pro Mod X out. Um, this is the Traveler bag it comes in. Uh, you'll note that I've got a little bit of a mod on the bag because when you open it up here, you'll see that it has foam on the inside. I bought some foam, sticky backed foam and put it all in. Makes this a really good traveling bag. I think the bag as it comes is a little um, insufficiently protective for the, the ProMod X. Now I've put the strap on two of the nuts, so I'll have to get that out of the way. All right, this is the usual procedure for getting the ProMod X running. So you note I've taken the strings off, and one of the things about the ProMod X without the strings is that this roller end will come out and it's it's not anchored in any way. So I've taped it in. Uh, when I put new strings on it after the tuners, I'm gonna put some uh, nut sauce on that uh, bar so these rollers really sm roll smoothly. These are the stock tuners, which I'm gonna take off. And the important thing you kind of know if you've got a Pro Mod X is that this um, is the control uh, leg of the guitar. It has um, basically the input jack on the inside. It has the piezo control, the um, humbucker control, the selector switch are all on this, which basically mounts as a kind of a leg rest for the guitar. It's connected to the main body with a stereo um, plug. So I uh, don't need any of this. I'm not making any mods in here. I'm not going to put a tone control in. I decided not to do it. And, but I am gonna to have to uh, take off some of this bit. So let's, let's have a look at what I've gotta take off here. So uh, you can see the tuners are mounted on these bars. I'm gonna to have to take those off because I wanna put tuners in and it'll just be easier when you uh, take those bars off. And then of course the, the electronics, particularly the selector switch that goes from single coil to humbucker, are in, all in this box along with the tuner. So this is gonna come up, have to come off with these three screws. And the main purpose of this video is to show you what it looks like on the inside after you've done that. And then if you turn it over, uh, the pickup, which I'm gonna have to re replace, is of course in this pickup mounting ring, which I'll take off. Note that I've also taped the bridge in. The bridge on the um, ProMod X is one of those floating tunematics, so it's not actually held down in any way. So it'll be coming off, I don't have this tape on it. And the piezo is actually glued on the underside. So I don't want to touch the piezo and I don't want it rattling around too much. So I'm just going to let it be taped in there. So the thing I've got to do is take out these three screws. That, that'll be the next step. Okay, so now I'm going to take those three screws out. I'll just leave it to the rest in the case here. Why not? So first screw here. These screws are um, mounted in the wood. Uh, they're pretty solid. Uh, it's just not one of those where you, when you take them out, you think, gosh, am I gonna uh, destroy this thing by, by uh, taking the screws in and out? Um, it's it's uh, not like that. By the way, a uh, thing to say here is, you'll note this plate here. You'd think that maybe there's some electronics underneath that. There isn't. That plate's just mounted as a serial number plate and uh, doesn't really um, need to be taken off for any reason. I've already looked underneath it, so I kind of know what it's looked like underneath there. So get this last screw taken out enough, we'll be able to look inside and see how the electronics actually work in this unit. So let's take that off. I think I've got it all free now. Okay, so there you see. So what, you, what you'll, you'll notice here, and we'll get a good look in at this. I'll bring the camera in 
uh, in a minute to see. So you've got a ground to the bridge, great. You've got your, there's a, it may be a little unobvious, but there's a single, po uh, a single pole double throw switch there, and there's nothing on one side of it. This is the kind of typical wiring you expect for a split coil uh, humbucker. Uh, note that the coloring is different from what you'd expect on a Seymour Duncan pickup. You wouldn't expect to see green and white going to a common middle there. Uh, you've got one of those um, quarter inch stereo jacks that actually screws from the inside here. And then you've got the tuners. So uh, just giving you a little zoom in there and, and doing a little prying around here. You can kind of see there's your ground wire going to the bridge here. Uh, it's a little in the way, but you can see that. This big thick one here is coming from the humbucker, and you'll note you've got five things coming out of it, you know, uh, the way, what, way you'd expect. Two of them going to the center of that single pull double throw. Uh, we've got a, the, the quarter inch jack here, and underneath here, there's got lots of wiring. Uh, your piezo wire is uh, just a double conductor wire. It's right here. And of course, you'd expect it to go to ground in, in one of the um, hot poles on the stereo. So what I'm going to do now is take this all apart, uh, take uh, disconnect the humbucker connections, certainly. I'll probably end up having to un un disconnect the, the piezo too, even though I don't want to. Uh, and to get everything out of the way, I'm probably going to take the tuners out first. I'm not going to show you all my clumsy handwork uh, doing all of that, but when you come back, hopefully everything will be cleared out and we'll be ready to do the actual installation. See you in a minute. Okay, just documenting a bit of progress here. Uh, you'll see now the old humbucker, here it is. Uh, it's kind of a dual rail humbucker, is out. Um, you know, it's it's a fairly, uh, I'd say, unsophisticated little pickup, but there it is. Uh, and I'll try to palm that off on eBay. I mean, I think it's not a bad pickup. You heard what it sounds like. It's just off-brand, so it's probably not going to be worth much. Uh, you'll note that I've taken out the, the DBT switch, which was the main connection to the humbucker and I've uh, taken it off this, this plug. Um, this is a tight fit. The, the Seymour Duncan is slightly uh, deeper than the original pickup. So this, this just fits in, but it does fit. And uh, so I've gotten that in. Uh, this is a bit of a, a struggle on the pickup ring, but it, it, does, it does go in. I didn't manage, I didn't, didn't strip any screws or anything. The other real point of concern I wanted to point out if you try to do this mod is that the Grover tuners are ever so slightly bigger uh, this way. And I was really worried about, is this bevel here going to uh, be incompatible with the Grover tuner? But it's not, it's just really close. And uh, I should be able to get the retention screw in uh, just, just enough and get it past this uh, quarter inch jack and everything should work out fine. I've already tested it. So the next step will be wiring this pickup in, which I'm gonna uh, do off camera because it'll be clumsy as hell and then putting in the tuners and then reassembling the, the whole thing, which I'll do in a later video. So it is done. Um, so what you see here is I've now put in the Seymour Duncan uh, Red Devil pickup, uh, strung the guitar, and I put in these Grover tuners. Uh, you'll note that uh, now we have a three-way switch here. We have humbucker, single coil, and humbucker with the two coils in parallel. Typically humbuckers are in series, which is this, and then the other side you've got parallel. And I'll show you what that sounds like in a bit. I do want to give you some notes on, on how it all went when I installed things. We turn it over here. Uh, you'll see that I put in the Grovers and you'll note that these have a, you know, a typical retainer screw. The, um, the stock uh, tuners on the uh, Pro Mod X Traveler uh, are pin types, so they don't have this. So I had to drill a pilot hole. I did that with a little pit vise uh, by hand. It worked just fine. It's very close to the edge, but not dangerously so. So that was fine. The one note I will give you if you try to do this mod is, uh, I didn't show you my clumsiness when I was, was doing things, but the one thing is, if you take the tuners out, which you probably should, regardless whether you're changing them, if you're doing the electronics, Take them out because you need to take out this jack. You don't have to take it all the way out to do the mod I did, but you do need some more space because when you put in this larger switch, there's plenty of room in there, but getting it in is a pain unless you can uh, screw this jack out a bit. So you need to move the tuner so you can screw out the jack. 
and then don't put the tuners back in until after you've gotten all the electronics wired and the and everything uh, make sure you can fit everything in get everything wired get that switch in put the jack back in place then put your tuners on then put the thing back together because if you don't do it in that order which i didn't do you're going to struggle a little bit to get the three-way switch in so now that you've seen all that uh, by the way these grovers i put on are locking you'll note that i've strung it now you know that uh, there's no excess strings which is great for this guitar because you don't have excess strings that are going to tear a sweater you're wearing or anything like that and moreover it's much much easier to string with a locking tuner so if you ever buy a pro mod ix get it with the locking tuners if you're modding it you can put these nice uh, grover 406 c's which have a locking uh, a locking capability on the string you just put the string through you start winding it at locks so that makes it much easier to string the other thing that i did by the way is when i had these rollers off i put some uh, nut sauce lubricant underneath them i've nut sauced everywhere that the string contacts a stationary part uh, which i think is helping with the tuning but these are the real gem because now that i didn't have to do a clumsy winding job i've actually got um, a pretty good uh, tuning stability that uh, I didn't really have before. So anyway, uh, now let's move on and I'll show you what it sounds like and it does sound pretty good. Okay, I'm uh, going to show you a little more here because I ended up doing a bit more modification than I expected on uh, the Pro Mod X. Um, the first thing that happened when I started testing the new pickup is uh, I realized I, I really liked what I was hearing, but I turned the volume down. And I don't think I'd ever turned the volume down with the original pickup. And I realized that the volume control seemed to cut everything off in the last, like, one-tenth of the turn of the pot, which uh, indicated to me that something was going on. It was exactly what I expected. If you can see this and read that, this is the pot that I've taken out now. And you'll see that it reads uh, B500K here. This is a 500K linear pot, which is what the volume pot in the ProMod X is on the humbucker, which is wrong. Um, first of all, 500K is probably too much for that little dual rails humbucker. And second of all, linear is completely wrong. As you know, you need an audio taper pot for a guitar because uh, it's an audio application. And decibels, if you want a linear decrease in decibels, you need a, you need a logarithmic audio taper pot. So something was wrong. So I, I had to investigate and I broke inside the thing, which is the uh, broke inside this control bar component and uh, figured out what was in there. And I'll show you that next. So um, I went inside and find it, found, uh, found this linear taper pot um, uh, that was controlling the volume. And I decided I was going to replace that with what's recommended, obviously an audio taper pot, but it's a 250K for the uh, Red Devil Humbucker is what Seymour Duncan recommends, and I think that's probably appropriate for a slightly lower power pickup. And uh, I did something a little bit more. If you'll notice, this is a this pot that I've put in here uh, fills up a lot of the space because it's a stacked pot. And what I've gone in and done, it may not be obvious, but in there is an orange drop, Sprague orange drop 22 pickup ferret um, uh, um, capacitor. So I put in a tone control, and underneath there I also used a... Um, a, uh, a solder lug to ground to this pot. Uh, all of it fit in just barely. It pretty much fills up the space. But uh, what I've done on the other side here, you'll see, I've got still got the speed knob. I love the fact that they've used a, a knurled knob for the piezo and a speed knob. But underneath that speed knob is another knurled knob, and that's my tone control. So I put a tone control underneath the speed knob doesn't stack the prettiest I've ever seen because I didn't have the tools to shorten the shafts and things just barely fit in this. But uh, so I've got a tone control now on the bottom and on the top of the volume control. The wiring in here is pretty standard. Um, I think you'll find in a jazz bass, the, uh, the tone is the inner uh, and the volume is the outer. And that's, that's a pretty standard um, way to wire up one of these stacked concentric pots. This is the same thing, except I've turned it upside down. So it's, it's the same wiring, just turned upside down. And it all did fit, just barely. So that's that's a, another mod that I've done. Okay, oh wait, there's more. There's one more thing that I've done, besides the mods I've already shown you. And I wanted to show you that as well. Let me do this last plug in to plug the control panel in. 
When I put it together, I uh, found out that although putting these Grover locking tuners was a great move, it made it much easier to string, I still didn't have quite the tuning problem, tuning stability that I wanted. I still had some tuning problems. So a couple of things that I did. One, uh, a tro problematic component in the Pro Mod X is this roller uh, tailpiece. Uh, it it is a little sticky so i lubed the crap out of it basically i've just lubed it and I've, I've spaced it apart i pulled the spacers a little away from the little pulleys put lube in between them uh and uh after that i got pretty stable tuning but i did realize there was one more thing that was wrong and i'll kind of show you what that is is uh, so when i play i very often you know rest my hand like this well what i was doing is touching the tuners and I realized uh, touching the tuners subconsciously and knocking this thing out of tune was happening a lot. It's a problem. So I thought, what do I need? Um, what I need is a pick guard. I need to cover these up and have somewhere to set my hand. And fortunately, I had an old uh, bluegrass F-style mandolin pick guard. I hate pick guards on mandolins. I always take them off. And so I had one and I thought, oh, well, I could do something with that. So what I got was I got some um, millimeter thick neodymium um, magnets and I took a stack of three. This is three millimeters high. So these are each three millimeters. I, I kind of played around with positioning and then I put uh, on this other side of this pit guard, I put these here so that I can then basically magnetically attach a pit guard. That was not enough. Uh, the sideways motion was too much. So what I've done here is I've taken a little um, wood. This may be hard to see in the video, but I put a couple of wood panels in here and uh, had to hollow out a little bit here to make room for the tuners. It's not hard to do, but what you can do now is you basically come in and do this, push that into that slot. It totally clears the tuners, so the tuners are not uh, touched at all by the pieces of wood. This thing is now in there so very solidly. And uh, actually, I think it looks kind of cool. I actually like the look of it. It, it gave me a nice uh, kind of rock and roll look with this F-style mandolin pick guard. I actually think that this should come with the Pro Mod X. I think you should basically have a pick guard available with it uh, and, uh, and you know, be able to attach to the front and block out those tuners because you, there's no chance you're really knocking these tuners with your hand. But with the way people play, see my hand sits right there. This gives me a really great place to put my fingers when I pick. Uh, it's really close to the E string, but it's far enough away. It almost uh, gets a little too close to the 20 uh, second fret here. I could trim that off, but, but, but with the right positioning, it's just perfect. That just is out of the way and fine. Uh, and it all works. And um, so now this is what my new modified Pro Mod X looks like. And uh, I really like it. So next I'll show you what it sounds like. Oh, one last thing I forgot to say. Some of you may wonder, why didn't I do the same thing on the piezo that I did on the uh, humbucker when I had it open? Why didn't I add a, a, a tone control underneath it? There's a reason for that. The reason is piezos that are passive hate tone controls. Effectively, the, you know, if you have a tone control in there, it's, just, it's not going to work very well because piezos are just not uh, suited for, for uh, uh, that kind of circuit. Uh, and you'll find that this piezo volume actually isn't bad, although the, the, the volume over here with that linear pot was terrible. The piezo volume isn't bad, uh, and it has a bit of a tone effect in it. When you when you turn down just a bit, you'll lose some of the highs out of this piezo that are annoying. Uh, so so a, a passive volume on a piezo isn't terrible, but putting a tone on it would be a waste. It would just not work well, so I didn't do that. So now I can balance things out just using these three controls pretty effectively. So I uh, just wanted to add that in.